after the Dong Zhua Crusade, the Guangdong Alliance army was disbanded, while Yuan Shao, the leader of the alliance, returned to Bo High Commandery in frustration. At this time, Yuan Shao, except for the two resounding names of the three counselors in four generations, and the alliance leader of the Guangdong army, actually only has a small piece of land as Bo High Commandery, which was in fact given by Dong Zhuo. In that time of the Law of the Jungle, if you couldn't expand your power quickly, you would soon be eaten by others, regardless of whether you were a famous scholar or an alliance leader. At that time, Bo High Commandery belonged to Jizhou Province. So Yuan Shao naturally targeted the territory of Ha Fu, the governor of Jizhou. There was a conflict between Han Fu and Gong Sunzun in Yuzu at that time, so Yuan Shao adopted the strategy of the strategist Peng Ji. On the one hand, he led his army to the west and set up an attack on Ji Zhou. On the other hand, he secretly wrote a letter to Gong Sunzun and made an appointment to jointly pincer at Ji Zhou. Han Fu was really no match for Gong Sunzun and was defeated as soon as they fought and even his general Chu Yi rebelled. Yuan Shao sent emissaries to make friends with Chu Yi and his nephew, Dao Gan, and a strategist, Chun Chen, went to Ye Cheng to persuade Han Fu. Yuan Shao's strategy was really beautiful. Han Fu, who was a coward in nature and had no strategy, agreed to give up Ji Zhou and invited Yuan Shao to be the governor of Ji Zhou under coercion and lure. In this way, without a single soldier, Yuan Shao got Ji Zhou, the richest of the 13 provinces in the country, while Han Fu, the wrongdoer, was deprived of his military power and died under house arrest. Ji Zhou, with its large area and abundant resources, gave Yuan Shao an inexhaustible supply of soldiers and talents. By this time, Yuan Shao's civil officials included Zhu Shou, Shen Pei, Wu Tu, Tian Feng, Xu Yu, Peng Ji, and Xun Shen, and his generals included Chu Yi, Yan Liang, Wen Chou, Zhang He, and Gao Lan, initially constructing his own core team. But this time Yuan Shao was facing a situation that was not optimistic. Although Jizhou is rich, it is surrounded by strong enemies. Qinzhou to the east is where the remaining Yellow Turban rebels have gathered, and it's been in chaos for years. To the south is Tao Cao's territory, Yanzhou, to the west, Bingzhou was once under the rule of Zhang Yan's Black Mountain Army. The north is even more dangerous, as the powerful warlord, Gong Sunzun, is entrenched in Yuzhou, watching intently. At the beginning of 192 AD, Gong Sunzun, who had long been impatient, launched a strong attack on Jizhou, which led various counties to surrender, and Yuan Shao personally led his troops to meet the attack, and the Battle of Jiechao broke out. Gong Sunzun arranged his 30,000 infantry in square formation, with 5,000 light cavalry on each flank, and in the center was, the guards on white horses, the toughest cavalry force in combat, the guards on white horses, are Gong Sunzan's most elite cavalry escort numbering about 3,000, the horses are all white and the soldiers are all the best of the best, they have strong mobility and power, and are very loyal to Gong Sunzan, which is Gong Sunzan's greatest support, even the valiant Hun cavalry, when they see, the guards on white horses, they mostly go away, but this time they've met their nemesis, Chu Yu's 800 Daredevils. In fact, Yuan Shao arranged this, it is a helpless move. If we want to talk about the strength of infantry, Yuan Shao is not weaker than Gong Sunzan, but Yuan Shao's cavalry is not many, if you take it out to fight, it is not enough F. Are Gong Sunzan to fill his teeth? There is a natural disadvantage in using infantry against cavalry, not to mention that with only 800 men, Gong Sunzan will surely take it lightly. This is the effect that Chu Yi wants. In fact, these 800 men are just bait, and behind them are 1,000 bastas, which are very powerful and far from ordinary thousand arrows, and this is Chu Yi's real killer weapon. Sure enough, Gong Sunzan, 
seeing the small number of soldiers on the other side, ordered his cavalry to charge and trample on the enemy, while Chu Yi led the 800 elite infantrymen, quietly crouching under the shields. At that time, Yan Gang, the general under Gong Sun Zong, was leading the guards on white horses to rush to a place dozens of paces away from the enemy when he suddenly discovered the thousand terrifying Li Bastas, and the harsh cold light from the dense arrows instantly made Yan Gang's brain go blank. What the Bastas means to the cavalry, Yan Gang knows better than anyone, but it's already too late. Not waiting for Yan Gang to react, Chu Yi jumped off with 800 Darid Bulls, killing over, at the same time, the Bastas were fired, the arrows were like meteors, swooping down on Gong Sun Zan's cavalry, where they hit, like lightning and thunder, in the bloody air, mixed with the cavalry's dying wails, and the neighing of their horses, a large number of troops fell down in a split second, and the entire army of Gong Sun Zan was in chaos, with soldiers scrambling to flee for their lives. Chiu Yi became more and more courageous in his fight all the way, they captured the Jed Xiao, while Gong Sun Zong led the remnants of his troops to retreat to Ji County. At this moment, Yuan Xiao is commanding behind with tens of thousands of infantrymen, and when he sees that Chiu Yi has won a great victory, he becomes a bit careless with the enemy. He ordered his main force to chase the enemy, while he himself led more than 100 guards, holding dozens of crossbows, slowly marking behind them. When he reached a distance of more than 10 miles from the Jiaxia, he heard that Gong Sun Zun had already been defeated, so he got down from his horse and rested for a while. At that time, Gong Sun Zan's more than 2,000 cavalrymen who had fled suddenly appeared and surrounded Yuan Shao's 100 people. At that time, these people didn't know that the one in there was Yuan Shao, so they didn't play with their lives to charge, otherwise Yuan Shao's life would not have been saved. After these people surrounded Yuan Shao, they just released random arrows on the periphery, and for a while the arrows fell a grain, making the situation very dangerous. The strategist Tian Feng supported Yuan Shao, and asked him to hide in a short wall to avoid the arrows, but Yuan Shao was furious, and fiercely slammed his helmet on the ground, saying that, a great man preferred to die in battle, could he survive by hiding behind the wall? Yuan Shao's heroism dispersed the fear in the hearts of the crowd. He boosted the morale of the people, and calmly commanded the bowmen to fight against them, never letting the enemy troops advance, Soon Chiu Yi led his troops to come to rescue them, which made the group of cavalrymen quickly withdraw. The Battle of Jia Xiao was a classic battle in Chinese history in which infantry defeated cavalry, taught future generations that strict discipline, the ability to choose the right moment, and the personal qualities of the commander are always the key to win. After this battle, Chiu Yi became famous throughout the country, while Gong Sun Zan's guards on white horses were basically wiped out with the general Yan Gang killed in battle, while Yuan Shao stabilized Ji Zhou, firmly controlling this rich foothold. <laughs>